Uh, L. Duncan last late last week got into a little bit of a back and forth with uh, Stephen A. Smith and was it Shannon Sharp was the other person I I can't remember. Uh, but she played the C section card that uh, they're, they're talking about football. They're talking about you know how tough football is, and I maybe it was after Tua got hurt or or, or whatever. And L. Duncan played the C section card. Let's watch the clip. These football players make those decisions every single day as men. Provide, protect. That's our number one priority. That's how most of us think. And that plays a role into the kind of decisions men make, even when they're deemed selfish, foolish, ill-advised, or whatever. It comes with it when you're a man. Listen, as someone who is a woman, who has two scars that go from hip to hip because I've had two C-sections in an effort to provide for my family and create a family for my family. I understand sacrifice. A black woman in this country whose mortality rates are incredibly high, I understand making sacrifices and trying to mitigate risk when it comes to your family, expanding your family and protecting your family. All I am simply imploring is that anyone in Tua's corner, someone that truly believes and loves Tua, is having a real conversation with him right now about what quality of life looks like and we I, I bring this up because again I'm just so much money has been dumped into sports that everybody wants a piece of it and so you got all these women uh, that want a piece of this sports money they want to be sideline reporters that's what they used to want to be now they want to be hosts now they want to debate sports now they want to you know stand go toe-to-toe -to -toe with you know, Ryan Clark was the guy out there that actually had played uh, sports at any type of level. Stephen A. Smith didn't even play high school basketball, uh, made up some college basketball career. Obviously, Molly Quirum, not an athlete, an IG model that's a decent host. Uh, L. Duncan, the, L, L. Duncan, the same thing. I'm just keeping it real. Everybody Ooh. wants a piece of the Mo Money deal. And so every, women are in roles that... They really have no business being in, particularly she's not a former athlete. She's not some former WNBA player talking about Caitlin Clark or talking about the NBA. This is an IG model that now thinks that, hey, I had a C-section, and that's analogous. And look, actually, what she went through probably is more difficult than what Tua went through, you know, brittle glass Joe Tua. But it's just not the appropriate conversation. It's not what anybody wants, but... You know, it's part of this mo money, bad product, even from the sports talk TV. Stephen A. Smith is going to get paid $20, $25 million a year. He's terrible, doesn't know what he's talking about. They're going to throw him in on NFL coverage more than likely. Ryan Clark actually knows something about football, but he's been, in order to get super paid, he has to play some woke idiot and, and manufacture all this emotion about sports. Mo money, bad product. We're destroying sports. Your thoughts? So many thoughts here. Jason, do you remember that cinematic classic, Don't Be a Menace? Great parody. <laughs> I and, love it. Yeah. And every time someone said something outlandish, the older Wayans would pop in, message! That, that's what went through my mind when Ms. Duncan came up with that soliloquy. By the way, since C-sections are so dangerous, that explains why she is such a frontline soldier for reproductive rights. You know, I, now I get it. But here's the thing. That was so inappropriate. The number one, how she interjected herself into it, something you really shouldn't do. And that thing just didn't come out of the left field. That came out of the bleachers. In fact, that came out of the parking lot. Jason, this would be like me and you talking about a game where a certain player makes a diving catch reaches the ball over the goal line with eight people hitting him, but he holds on to the ball, but he breaks his ribs, but they win the game because of that play. But he's out for two weeks, but what a sacrifice he makes. And you would say, Korean Cosell, what did you think of that play? And I, and I would just say, you know what I think? This reminds me about a month ago, I was on the road about 75 miles from my house. And you'd be like, yeah. And I stopped at a gas station to fill up and I was a little hungry. And I saw that the three-day-old gas station sushi was on sale. But you know what? I was hungry, and I did it. About 25 <laughs> miles later, I, I started getting bubble guts. And you'd be like, yeah, really? 
I started driving really, really, really fast. Yeah. And then as I'm screaming around the corner, I almost couldn't hold it. Yeah. And then I ran in like OJ Simpson through the airport and I barely did it. And I didn't shit myself. That's how heroic that I know what it is to work under pressure, under physical duress. <laughs> Message. <laughs> the hell does that have to do with the price of tea in China? That's all I'm saying. Yeah. Well, point but that story took me on a whole different ride i appreciate that <laughs> steve is great so i Thank when you. i look at the folks like on espn and, and a lot of folks out there just like in the nfl you have system quarterbacks i think on tv we have a lot of system analysts and they 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 fit the role they fit what it is they're, they're not a standout like a john elway or like a joe montana or tom brady they're a system analyst they fit what the system is they're not unique they're not so so it works in that fashion it I'm arguing they've built a horrendous system that it's the wildcat offense. And, it, you know, it worked for a hot second, a tiny, <laughs> tiny second. The wildcat fooled people. And then all of a sudden, like, well, we know what you're going to do. You're taking the quarterback out. You got a running back back out. This is easy to shut down. And that's what's happened with, and, and this, is, this is a serious point, Butter and Steve. Putting attractive women on TV doesn't carry the weight or the appeal that it used to because of Instagram, because of Pornhub, because you can, you, I can remember when I was a kid, ESPN had an exercise show on in the morning and women would be in their yoga pants or bikinis oh, exercising or whatever. Tom. With Kiana Tom, yes. I love that show, Jason. <laughs> yes. Oh, that was good. Yes. Oh, quality and television. And we would watch yes. it Kiana. because it's like we didn't have access to Instagram. <laughs> we didn't have, you know, there was no Pornhub. And I'm not saying I'm on Pornhub. I'm just saying we didn't have that. And so this whole thing of like, hey, let's put an attractive woman on TV and guys are going to sit there and go, oh, yeah, this is great. No, that's Jason. over. Jason. Yeah. In defense of those fine young ladies on Instagram and Pornhub and those other sites, at least we're not subjected to listening to their inane sports opinions. They just do what they do. They, they're just there to look good. I can't, you know your role. And young ladies, many of you play it very well. Here's the thing about that. And I never thought I'd have a thought of Tony Sperano, God rest his soul, creator. Not the creator. He brought out the Wildcat in 2008. Jason, in a situation like that, which is a serious issue, uh, Tua and the health of players, should players be forced to retire? Should he play on? If I'm the producer of any of those shows, I tell all the ladies, with all due respect, uh, we could talk about the treatment of Angel Reese in another segment. I'm bringing out three or four former players and having a moderator. I want their opinions. They are the guys who bled on the field. They understand the athlete's perspective and specifically when it comes to football. So anyone that played football that's on that network, I'm bringing them in. With all due respect, I don't even want to hear about my opinion, much less L. Duncan and her C-section. That's where you have to say, guys, this is men only because men play football. Well, uh, they can't do that because of their commitment to DEI and because they think they're executing a strategy that's going to make women football fans and they're executing a strategy that makes it so this effort justifies matriarchal politics being injected into all sports. And so th that's why, you know, Remember when we were growing up, Steve, or when we were much younger, 20 years ago, virtually every newspaper story, uh, some long profile on some black athlete, it would always come down to his dad abandoned him and his single mother worked two or three jobs and he never knew his father. And then this coach took him under his wing and now he's a football star. And it, it oh, this is a great field. Every story was the same. And I'm not blaming people for writing those stories, but I do think there was an intent 
to just force this message down people's throat. You don't need a man. Look at how great this kid is. His mother played the role of mother and father and blah, blah, blah. And they shoved that messaging down our face. And this is what we're seeing now with the women as broadcasters and commenting on football and sitting going toe to toe with Ryan Clark and Marcus Spears and other guys that actually played football. And, and, and these guys going along with it. Again, Dan Orlovsky, Ryan Clark, for the check, they sit around and pretend like Mina Kimes knows just as much as them. Jeff Saturday does it. They all do it for the check. They all just throw reality out the window because they want that more money and they don't mind the bad product because they know that's what's being paid for. Help us grow the Fearless Army. Pound that like button, subscribe to the channel, and share this video with all your fearless friends.